He here. He's coming in studio. Yeah, we'll get him in. All right, the author here, uh, Douglas Murray. We're about to bring him on. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, this next gentleman, you can find him uh, on Twitter at Douglas K. Murray. This is his uh, newest book, The War on the West. For people who don't know, and I want to get into a few things that I just find uh, very interesting as far as your point of view. But what's this book about, The, the War on the West, specifically? Uh, the War on, on the West is a sort of culmination of three books I've written starting with The Strange Death of Europe about migration, then The Madness of Crowds, which was about all the crazy stuff going on with trans and women's rights and gay rights and all that stuff. And then this is this is a sort of culmination of it, which is just basically my best attempt to try to explain what I think is actually going on in our time, which is essentially a war on everything that's ours and an admiration and a love of everything that isn't. So that, you know, we admire all traditions apart from our own, uh, the cool thing to do is to like love things from other places and to hate everything from our own civilization. Yeah. So that, you know, uh, we're now, I, I, I do it in four parts, the war on white people, which I think is an absolute catastrophe waiting to happen, mm -hmm. where you tell the majority population that they're appalling and have nothing to be said for them and they have no reason to be and proud. And you say this so as on. an obscenely white person. I am obscenely white. Oh, yes. I, I mean, I'm, I'm English and Scottish. Yes. You know, I mean, I mean, yeah, it's as bad as it comes. Also, and I, mean, you, I don't know if you, do you qualify as a ginger? Not quite. Not quite. No. Okay. But blue eyes. But if I sought from minority status, I yes. could. Um, but no, uh, the, the basically, I mean, I think that this, this thing of right, only one group you're allowed to be racist about, and that's white people. Uh, so I describe that the war on white people. Uh, the war on Western history, which is obviously just we decided to ransack everything in our past, take it all down, all, all the heroes, there's no one left, and completely re rewrite all Western history to say it's only about slavery, racism, and colonialism, because, of course, the rest of the world did nothing wrong at all in history. It's no, just I mean, I don't know if you've seen, they're, uh, they're going gangbusters in North Africa. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and better and better. Yes. And uh, then the third one is the war on Western religion, which is not just our Judeo-Christian religion, but the secular religion as well. I mean, the war on enlightenment values, which is just unbelievable. And some people might not realize just how advanced that is. And then the war on Western culture, where just every single thing that's been produced from the buildings to the art, the music of the West is also just looked at through this anti-racism lens. You know, it's all terrible because it's created by those by people who are guilty of those three terrible things, being white, being male, and being dead. Yes. And as you know, uh, it's particularly unforgivable to die um, yeah. because none of the critics who attack the dead white males will ever experience that themselves. I thought you were going to say if you're a kamikaze. <laughs> Let's show a kamikaze. That's more, we'll get into the morality sense of it. I thought you were going to say being white, being male, being straight. Well, that's obviously a particular sin. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's an abnormal state, yes. of, state of affairs. <laughs> exactly. Which um, unforgivable. Well, if we're going, we're talking about sort of the birth of modern, civil, you know, Western civilization. If we're going back to even like Rome, you know, lots of gay stuff. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And Before uh, my times. Yes. Uh, I've heard talk of the, it. the Greeks, yeah. uh, the island of Lesbos. When I was, we were talking about this recently, the uh, history. Um, very different historical lesbians. It's not just a bunch of, uh, you know, masculine women who shop at Orvis. Uh, a few years ago. Bro. <laughs> A few years ago, there was a Channel 5 documentary in the UK. It's not our finest channel. And um, they did a documentary That's Is that called Channel 4 or 6? You know, is that your finest channel? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's the last channel on Terrestrial. Okay. And they made a documentary called uh, Lesbians Go Mad in Lesbos. And uh, they a whole ship of lesbians landed on the Isle of Lesbos as if they were going to commune with their place of origin. <laughs> of, course, of course, the poor locals just had like, this horror. They yeah. live in a very charming island, and suddenly these women are going around waving dildos in the street. I know, I just imagine there's some beautiful, you know, sun-kissed Mediterranean woman oiling herself on the beaches, and then just someone runs in crushing a natty ice can, like, oh, let's do this! I'm like, oh, God. Yeah, the it was basically that. Or the 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 British are here. I don't know. Were they were they English? Or I would imagine that it's most Americans most of the worst tourists are British. I like to think. Really? Oh yeah, sadly yeah. Well, because we always hear about uh, from the, the Brits about how the worst tourists are Americans. Yeah, but we do violence better. I think that's true. Yeah, that's mindless true. violence. Yeah. Is well, there's great... nothing like a good soccer riot. Exactly. Except we have good hockey riots in Canada. We always knew when I was raised in Montreal, if the Canadians won the Stanley Cup, there would be a riot. Right. And if they lost, which was always in my lifetime, they also would riot. That's a riot. Um, so okay, I want to because you just covered a lot of ground there. Let me ask you this off the bat because I know people watching will have a question. This you define yourself, or I have heard you describe yourself. I don't want to miss as a, a 
a Christian atheist or an atheist Christian. Do I yes. have that right? Yeah. What does that mean? Well, it means I'm not a believer uh, in God, or at least I find it very hard to believe in God. I'd say maybe agnostic is better. Uh, but obviously I'm a Christian because I was born in a Christian civilization, a Christian country, brought up a Christian. So, I mean, you might there are people who lose their faith or don't have faith and are Jewish or Muslim, but that's not the same thing as a Christian atheist. Right. Um, well, I was going to say, because with, with, you know, for example, Jews, you can be a Jew through religion, through faith, through mm -hmm. ethnicity, or through culture. Sure. Whereas... Christianity is primarily, it's a you know, decision, the idea of salvation, the idea of making a decision. Yeah. Right? And so that's one thing I know. And look, I'm not trying to start this in a contentious way, but I know sure. some people will take, seems be to as me. as contentious I've, as you like, honestly. Yeah, well, I, I can take it. I, well, I, I, I know, uh, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> Reputationally. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I see it as someone who's not necessarily a, a, a Christian, believing it in the, in the literal sense, the way that all sure. Christians do, but a Christian sympathizer, like you're talking about, yeah. found, how it acts as the foundation yeah. for Western civilization, the Judeo-Christian values, yes. as opposed to the edgy atheists who would just say, uh, well, if I need a God to tell me not to uh, murder or steal, sure. then... Uh, no, know. I mean, I've known all the edgy atheists, as you call them. And I mean, I, I just think it's absurd not to concede the fact that much of what we have in... America, like Britain, Canada, is derived from Christian ethics, right. Christian ideas. And why deny that? I mean, you might not believe it, but you shouldn't deny it because it's, it's obvious. I mean, what, what are human rights but a kind of derivation of a form of spilt Christianity? Right. There's no reason to have human rights. They're not self-evident. No. Um, so I, th I think that, you know, you should just concede these things where they're true. And, and even if they're against your interests, and obviously for atheists it's against their interests very often, but, but nevertheless. And, and I also say that it's important to concede this because you should try to work out, I think, whether, you're, whether you want to engage in soaring off a branch of a tree that you're sitting on. Yeah. And um, a certain amount of atheism does consist of that, I think. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think it's the like I've always said it's 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 not the extremes where people say if I need a god to tell me to not murder mm. well first off that's also not necessarily universal what we def murder no, is absolutely. not killing right we define murder separate from killing but what we yeah. define as murder is just the byproduct of killing in some other countries but what yeah. about the other things like you know not committing adultery what about mm. the other, like you know for example you know if you talk about like Saudi Arabia allowing women to drive you know things like oh. that they're not universal values, and that's often taken for granted. But I think some people would, would, would just say, well, okay, there's, it's tough to say Christian atheists. Just, they would define it as atheists, but who's Christian sympathetic. Maybe. I mean, if I was Jewish, I, I, it would be more straightforward because I'd just be a practicing Jew who didn't believe. Which well, but the thing is, slightly but that's because you would be born Jewish ethnically. Sure. Sure. You know, it would be like, let's say you converted to Judaism you know, mm -hmm. because you had a, 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 a lady who was Jewish, but then right. you left her and then you left, but you called yourself Jewish. It's like, well, but you're not Jewish racially, sure. well, ethnically. It, yeah. I mean, Christianity is obviously a different matter. Uh, right. But I, I, just, I just think that if you, also if you, if you not only recognize that it's where you've inherited some of your ideas or many of your ideas from, but also ideas that you like, right? why would you go to war with them? I mean, um, this, is, this was a position I arrived at some years ago philosopher Roger Scruton is a great friend. He, he, he also wrote this, at the very least, don't war on it. Mm -hmm. um, why would you war on something that you, whose products you like? Yeah. Um, so I do have a slightly heretical atheistic standpoint. Okay. Did you always feel this way with Christianity? No, no, no. As a Christian. Very... No, I'm saying, did you always feel like it had ideas that you liked? Oh, yeah, of comparison? course. Well, I mean, I liked, this is one of the things I say in the war on the West is, I mean, I like the civilization I'm from. Right. I like the culture I'm from. I more than like it. I love it. And uh, I don't think it has to be apologized for. Um, I think it's very unusual in historic terms as well as in the world today. And you, we would be very, very stupid if we assumed that the kind of civilization that we like is by any means the default civilization. Right. It just isn't. I mean, uh, you know. That is interesting, actually, that you bring that up, that it's very, uh, it's very atypical historically for, lack of a better term, the winning culture the winning well really look at the british empire right the world's predominant superpower you let your number one draft pick get away we left you guys one century to become the only superpower the next sorry oh. but you know sooner or later we got to fly the coop uh that being said it, it, when people talk about the united states being an evil empire mm. i always find it odd when they say you know we need to, we need to stop uh, with the nation building it's too expensive well hold on a second if people look to the british empire uh 
it's not expensive. It's mm. profitable. That's what an empire is. You yes. take the resources. We're the only country who uh, go in and then apologize for not doing a good enough job. That's why I went into Iraq and uh, gave all the oil contracts to the French. Which I don't understand. I don't know why. I don't know why we didn't just take it. That's the one thing. Right? I don't know if you uh, in the UK. You know, but I've talked about this with Donald Trump. He forced people to pay attention by saying things that were reasonable, mm. and the media would say was offensive. So I don't know if you remember his, yeah, yeah. his quote where he said, "I would only go if we take the oil." And the media's like, "Can you believe he said we would take yeah. the oil?" And people at home are like, "Yeah, we're not." Yeah, that's. Uh, I, I mean, thought that we is... were. I thought it was a war for oil. <laughs> That is the norm historically, and uh, it, it's it's only us that thinks it's um, it's unusual and odd. Right. And I mean, there's a there's a graph in one of Stephen Pinker's books about um, average de average deaths by violence in societies, mm -hmm. and shows that you know, I mean, con as I point out in this book, contrary to the sort of Western idea that you know you have. Um, you know, you have guilty people in the West and everyone else is innocent, including, you know, all native peoples. They're always innocent. Right. If you look at the stats on it, like um, 60 more percent of like n in native populations among tribes, people in Africa and elsewhere, the males die violent deaths. Yes. And this is compared to like a small single digit percentages of males dying violent deaths in Europe in the 20th century, like in our worst century. Right. So, and a good portion of those, I don't know if you know this, uh, were, it was from, from nagging. <laughs> so it's sort of, <laughs> yeah, from nagging from the wife. It died. Yeah. <laughs> Starts with them the, boiling the pet I wasn't rabbit. aware of that. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. It throws off the statistics, but yeah, I just wanted to make sure for the audience that, that it was transparent. <laughs> I had, uh, after the um, pussy hat uh, <laughs> protests in Washington a few years ago, I had a very embarrassing conversation with um, a male colleague. I said to him, um, in England, quite a few people, unfortunately, I said, well, what's this stuff about the pussy hat? And uh, and uh, he said, oh, I think well, it's very strange. I mean, I think maybe there's a thing. There's a thing. That I, I didn't. Know. And I said, but what's he meant to me? And he was like, I think it might be the Volvo or something. Yeah. And eventually, like, again, like, I don't think it's actually to do with pussies, guys. I think it's to do with the cat. Yeah, I didn't. Well, see, I didn't catch that either <laughs> because um, I just assumed that it was a vagina that was horribly misshapen, and no one had, <laughs> no one had the heart to tell the person who designed the hat, like, right? It looks just like all of our vaginas. Yes. And they were like, yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All of our vaginas look that way. But now it's just like a dick with eyeshadow. That's what it is, the hat. Because they can't do it anymore. They, they can't they, do it. They, they can't, can't do it. stop tripping over themselves, and that is yes. a silver lining. Because, look, the people who have already bought in, they're not, they're, they're not going to change. But you know who will? Black Americans. We're seeing it with Latino Americans now. Oh. Uh, just in a generic Republican Democrat ticket, and it's entirely because of the wokeism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's good. But it's, I, good. it's good. It's good. It's good. You can only push people so far. Eventually, at some point, they do say, I'm calling time on that. I'm calling bullshit. And uh, I, uh, we're way past time for that. No, I think you're absolutely right. I think it's time that people recognize that with the left, we're, we are in an abusive relationship. And, you know, sort of like you'll see people like Dave Rubin or even Elon Musk saying, you know, Dave Rubin was like, I didn't leave the left. The left, they left me. It's like, okay, I understand what he's saying. Uh, where he's saying he's always been in the same place. I'm that way too, but I'm sort of in a different way. I've always been at this exact same place. I'm only slightly less reviled than I was like in 2009. Oh, right, yeah, I've always been sort of a basic Christian conservative where I believe mm. what I believe. I but you feel slightly less reviled. Well, because yeah, back then on YouTube, no one, well, I, I mean, I mean, I'm still reviled, don't get me wrong, yeah. but but there, it's sort I'm of glad. like- I didn't want to be here unless you were at least partly reviled. Part, partially. <laughs> but at least now people, uh, there was a certain period in time, like our average viewer is a 28 year old male, mm -hmm. to give you an idea. And there was a point in time where they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have even considered listening. Mm. You would get all, you know, the average, the median demo on, uh, the median viewer on Fox News was 72. This was in 2012. I don't know what it is now. Uh, so that is something that I see. And I know because I've you know, been on YouTube since 2006 doing political content since 2009. And back then it was only edgy atheists and liberals. There were yeah, no other yeah, right-leaning yeah. channels. So I do yeah. think that it sort of was the fragmentation of the media market Unfortunately, we're less unified, but it does uh, allow people to have a voice as long as big tech doesn't step on it. And I've seen that personally. Uh, so I, I haven't changed, but I I'm would, saying more people have come our way. I, no, I, I do agree with that. Um, I do. Although, I, by the way, everyone who says I didn't change, you know, the, the left left me, I didn't leave the left. I always want, I, I always want somebody, somebody, I'm not saying the people you cited, but I always want somebody to say, well, I used to be on the left, but then I became really right wing. Yes. Like, no one ever says that. Right. It's yes. always like, no, 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 the left left me, the left went back, I'm still where I am. Yes. Because some people do just become very right wing with age. Right. Yeah. It's like, you know, I... I and that's I fine. Yeah. That's absolutely 
absolutely fine. <laughs> well, Some yes. of my best friends have become more right wing with age. Oh, I can. I I'm can, looking forward to it. I, it's so funny to me. Old gay men, like almost all of oh, them, yeah. are so much more conservative. Very conservative. Which is like back in the day, you Very know. And now they're like, what? What? You yes. can be a girl. That's just they're like that yeah, guy yeah, in the yeah. basement apartment. Like, turn it down. Only they're gay. Yeah. And uh, we're seeing that change. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would love it. Just be like, you know, the left. Someone just say like, I used to be a lifelong Democrat. Then I read Pol Pot. You know, yeah. Or then I saw I read Pinochet, and you're like, oh, that's what tra- that's what changed it. They didn't leave you. You you went full <laughs> really right way. Yeah. All right, look, we got to go. I can sit here and talk for a, a, a whole bunch more time, but the war in the West. It's Douglas Murray, uh, and I did ask him beforehand. He prefers that to Doug, uh, which makes sense. Americans all call. They probably all shorten it to Doug, right? They try. We're always in a rush to get something. <laughs> to get to something else. Like I don't have yeah, all. Yeah. The, what, what am I going to pronounce your full name? Well, who, what am I retired Doug? Watch Louder with Crowder live, Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.